Hey, 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 hi everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying a lovely day. In this following lecture video, we're going to talk about VSF Avatar and why VSF Avatar is not a universal file format, as well as also talking about what is a universal file format in terms of 3D. Now keep in mind, I will be talking about this in the perspective of a VTuber or someone who's very brand new to 3D. I'm going to try my very best to dumb out the information as much as I can. Uh, but do keep in mind there are probably going to be some 3D terms that are probably very new to you, so please be aware about that, but I'll try my best to explain. Now, you may be wondering, um, well, what is the universal file format? So basically, uh, to keep in mind before I talk about that, 3D is not limited to VTubing only. 3D can be used for many of things. It can be used for medical stuff, you know, like 3D printing, basically. So 3D printing can be used for, like, medical print out parts to help people out you can also use 3d as well to build houses even that's actually a thing uh you can even use it to build tools and all that you know 3d printing has done a lot of stuff you can even use it in the film industry when you're making you know models and animations and such or even game dev t uh in the game dev in industry where you can develop games for people to have fun with and such you know and there's like a lot of stuff you can do. It's also been used heavily as well when it comes to training data for AI. I hate using the word AI. That thing, that term is heavily abused, but uh, it has been used for AI basically a lot. So basically, when it comes to 3D, it is not only for VTubing. It can be used for a variety of things. But in this video, I'll be talking about it in the perspective of a VTuber or someone brand new to 3D. So when it comes to uh, when it comes to a universal file format, what most 3D artists tend to use is the FBX file format. Now, do keep in mind there are many different universal file formats. Um, you know, so FBX is of course being one of the top ones. It's owned by Autodesk. I believe it's developed by someone else, but it was bought off from Autodesk. So a lot of 3D programs tend to use the FBX file format. Um, there's also other file formats as well, such as GLTF, Day File, OBJ. Those are other extra file formats uh, that they do get used. Not too wide, not too like like bigger than FBX, but again, it also depends on your use case as well. But in terms of VTubing, we primarily use FBX to convert into a VRM file. Um, I will also say as another example, if you're doing 3D printing, by the way, that STL would be the file format you use for 3D printing. Just wanted to at least say that. But basically, universal file format, our main focus is FBX. But there are many more that we could talk about, uh, but that's going to be... That, that could be for your own little homework if you want to do that. But basically though, when it comes to VRM, what the heck's a VRM file format? VRM is widely used in most VTuber programs. It's uh, technically not really widely accepted. I'm putting that in quotations. Like as its own VR, like there's no like VRM import saying natively in most 3D programs like Unreal, Unity, Blender and such. But... VRM is a modified GLTF file format, and GLTF is one of the many universal file formats for 3D three, for three models that other programs use. Um, so with GLTF, VRM is literally just GLTF but humanoid. It just has that humanoid standard with normalization and such. So with VRM, technically you can rename... Um, you can technically rename a VRM file to GLTF and it will be read the same way basically because it is a GLTF file format basically. Because it has pretty much, a, pretty much the same code but modified. So with most programs like Blender, Unreal, and so on, you could technically load a VRM file like you could rename it to GLTF and it should load just fine. But because you got Spring Bones and Mtune, um, keep in mind you're probably going to have to use a third party plugin. So that way you can actually have it load properly. But the thing is, at least because of GLTF, it's at least, you know, it can work well as a universal file format. But most VTubers, um, or anything virtual reality related, use VRM for that sort of case, basically. Um, and in case you're wondering as well, technically, I think there's an acronym for it. There's not really an official acronym I know of, but it does not stand for Void Model because... VRM existed before Void did. It was Void Studio that popularized the VRM file format. Um, but VRM, yeah, VRM just existed before Void did. I think, I think VRM was actually uh, one of the first VRM programs was Wakadu. It was one of the, one of the first that had VRM support. 
and that was before I think that was like around the time I think it was before Void ended up existing I think or around the same time basically I would say um, but either way I won't get into the whole VTuber program history though point is VRM popularized by Void Studio a lot of VTubers use it and VRM helps developers and users have an easier time when it comes to integration stuff. So on developer side, there is a standard to VRM, so it makes it easier for integration. For the user side, it just makes it easier to make a VRM file and just follow that standard. So that way, there's less bugs with the model and the model doesn't die so often. And it works well with mocap stuff and so on. So that's the benefit of VRM. Now, is it a perfect file format? Well, if you're a very technical type of person, heck no. But for most VTubers, they'll probably, you know, it's, it's a really good file format for what it does, basically. Now, um, another thing as well, VSF Avatar. What's so different about VSF Avatar and VRM if v VSF Avatar was made from a VRM file format? Well, when it comes to VSF Avatar, it is an asset bundle model. This is different. So basically, an asset bundle model these are not universal file formats. Uh, instead, these are more specific models that run on runtime. Most, I mean, yeah, like it depends on the degree program you're talking about, but in terms of Unity and Unreal Engine, these file formats, um, they run on runtime. And the thing about it is that, first of all, they're not, they're, well, I can't say first of all, but basically, as a bundle model, they're not specific to Avatar models. I'm, I just want to make sure that's elaborated. Asset bundle models can be used for props, worlds, pretty much anything. A lot of game devs actually use asset bundles quite often. Um, it's, a, it's very powerful, but in terms of VTubing, it's so that way, um, for VC face case, it's so that way um, there's like a system to basically whitelist certain components so that way it's accepted in the VC face program. So, VRM, you got your humanoid system, you got your model, your mesh, your bones, and all that. Uh, and that goes in the VC phase. But with VRM, you cannot put custom shading that's specific to the Unity engine. Or you cannot put constraints specific to the Unity engine. Like, just like FBX, because FBX, when you export the model, you cannot export custom shaders or constraints. You can't export that. VRM does pretty much like that, basically. Um... So keep that in mind, but with VSF Avatar on the other hand, if you're using a Unity program that does accept the VSF Avatar for program, which not all of them do, but with VC Fade, Vignon, VTuber Plus, and Ava Kit, those programs, you could take a VRM file, use a VSF SDK, convert that VRM file to a Unity mesh, and that way it can actually utilize those custom shaders, constraints, or custom physics, um, because the program, you know, that does accept VSF Avatar, they have the components that are whitelisted in VSF Avatar, so that way it can work. So you can't have your custom shaders, you can't have your custom physics and your constraints and all that. That's basically what the point of that asset bundle is made to do. Sadly, it's not accepted in most 3D programs because, again, it becomes a Unity mesh. It is specific to Unity and it only loads on runtime. Meaning, if you put a VSF avatar into Unity, it does not load like a VRM file or an FBX file. It will not show you the mesh. It will not show you the uh, rig. It, it does not do that. That's just how it is. So keep that in mind. When you if you export your VSF avatar, you cannot rely on that VSF avatar as your main model file. You know, your main model, basically. You have to have your VRM backup or your blend file backup, whichever one that you need your backup file. So keep keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, besides that though, uh, VSF avatar cannot go into other programs either, like you know Maya, Blender, um, Unreal Engine. All those other programs, VSF Avatar is not accepted in those programs because it's a Unity Mesh, and because it's a Unity Mesh, it only loads on runtime. So keep that in mind. Also, when it comes to other programs as well, so Wadudo or VRM Desktop Posing or any other program, the thing about VSF Avatar is that the dev not only has to, of course, integrate the, you know, they have to make it so that way the VSF Avatar file loads. You know, because it's an asset bundle, you can load on runtime. You also need to make sure, like, you also need to make sure as well 
that the program has the components that are whitelisted in VSF Avatar. So for instance, Magicka Cloth. You need to make sure that Magicka Cloth is integrated to your program, that way the physics can work for those who use Magicka Cloth. Custom shaders like Poyomi or Lil Toon. You gotta make sure those are integrated into your program so that way it can load. Basically, you gotta make sure that those components are pretty much properly loading your program. Now, I don't know the coding side. I don't know the development side of how it's properly done though. But all I know is that when it comes to VSF Avatar or at least an asset bundle, you need to make sure that the components that that asset bundle supports are in the program. And not every developer for a VTuber program ain't gonna do that. Or they may have their own system. This is where it gets to Wadudo. Wadudo does not accept VSF Avatar because it conflicts with their animation system. Because Wadudo, they have like a very intense animation system for blending different animations that exist in the program. VSF Avatar conflicts it very heavily. Um, at least according to what I've heard from the dev. Now, things may change. Uh, the dev may try to see if something can be worked out. Maybe they might integrate via Avatar. You never know. But even then, though, they have their own asset bundle system already called the Wadudo Avatar format. It's basically like via Avatar, but specifically for Wadudo. And not only that, but the Wadudo Avatar format is not only just for your avatar. It can be used for props and worlds and all that, at least according to Wadudo. Um, it just kind of depends on how it's exported that Wadudo Avatar format can be loaded into Wadudo. For Vinyan, Vinyan also has asset bundle models as well for their props and worlds. So if you use a Vinyan SDK, that's an asset bundle you're making. That's a, you know, there's that. So pretty much, you, there are different varieties of asset bundle models. Heck, even AvaKit has an asset bundle model. So basically, a lot of these programs nowadays, the upcoming newer VTuber programs, they have their own asset bundle systems or Pretty much. Uh, so VCF has VSF Avatar, Vinyan, they got their Vinyan SDK for props and worlds and stuff, but they do accept VSF Avatar. Water though, they don't accept Vinyan or VC Face asset bundles. They have their own system for that. So yeah. Um and then Ava Kit, they have their own asset bundle file as well for their models, basically. So Keep that in mind, and if you're ever questioning, like, what the heck's a Wadudo file, or what what's this file that this VTuber program have? It's if you if it's a pro it's a, if it's a file format. So if you're looking at a VTuber program and there's a file format that they mentioned that you've never heard of in your life, that's probably an asset bundle model, and that's just very specific to that program, basically. Uh, which again, it's very powerful. I recommend if you know some 3D stuff, uh, if you know how, depending on the engine of the program, because there's also you, you know, there's Unreal Engine programs as well that have their own asset bundle models, and then you got Unity with their own sort of thing, depending on the dev. Every dev is different, but depending on the program, if it's a file format that you've never heard before, it's probably an asset bundle model, and you could probably do a lot of customization with that asset bundle model, but even then, it really just depends on how it's made to work, basically. It depends. So, yeah. Um... I do apologize if there's any confusion, basically. In a nutshell, though, the universal file formats that are primarily used with 3D, there's SVX, but there's many others. You got VRM, which is the universal file format for most VTuber models, uh, or anything sort of like virtual reality sort of thing. But again, I wouldn't say like, you know, VRChat doesn't accept VRM, that has to be prefab and other stuff. But basically, with VTubing, mostly you're probably gonna use VRM. But when it comes to VSF Avatar, Wadudo Avatar, or anything related to that, these are not universal file formats. They are asset bundle models. They can only be made with the Unity engine. Um, depending on how it's set up, obviously, it could be, you know, depending on the asset bundle, it could be used for other, you know, it could be for a different program. But keep in mind, they cannot go into other programs unless there's, like, actual proper support. But asset bundle models, they can't go into Blender or different game engines such. They can only be loaded in the program that it is made for on runtime so yeah um and either way though th that's pretty much at least mainly it vsf avatar is not you know vsf avatar water the file they're not bad file formats um again they're really nice to have you know nice for like custom shading or wings and all that stuff but just keep in mind to always have your backup file a blend file your fbx or and or your vrm file backup uh basically the universal file formats or the file or like the file format you're probably going to use a lot for editing your model uh blend files they're not really universal that's just 
Blender's project files just wanted to also elaborate there. Keep keep in mind universal files are different from project files and also different from asset ball models. I know it's a lot to keep in track probably, but as you learn more about 3D, you'll get used to it. But yeah. But either way though, that's sort of like as best as I can on explaining what the heck asset ball models are, universal file formats, and so on. I hope that my blabbering has taught you something today. The if you still got questions about what is a what is a universal file format or what is an asset bundle model and so on, please feel free to comment it down. I'm always active. I'm always like watching my notifications, so I'll try to respond as fast as I can. Um, within 24 hours. But either way, though. I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!